So orbitals are specified with a number and a letter. The number is the quantum number, the principal quantum number. That's, that's the same as in Bohr's model, one, two, three, four, et cetera. And, and we sometimes refer to that as the principal shell of the orbital. It's like those orbits, different levels, and they are farther from the nucleus as the number goes up, and yet they're not like those levels. But as the number increases, we have increasing energy. So the higher the principal quantum number, the higher the energy. And then there's a letter that we use to designate the orbital. Um, the letter indicates the subshell. So this is the level, and this is a sublevel. It's a subcategory within the larger level, and this gives us the shape. The letters here are S, P, D, and F, which may seem kind of random. Um, these have historical significance. This, oh, I'm blanking on this again. Principal, diffuse, fundamental, and I can't remember the S right now. They had to do with the quality of the lines that they observed in the spectrums, spectra. So these orbitals have different shapes, and this has to do with the wave functions that describe them. The 1s orbital is the lowest, because n equals 1, it's the lowest energy. Um, orbitals are three-dimensional, they're not flat. Um, and this is a dot representation, so this is like me drawing, where's Andrew, right? Mm -hmm. So we see that most of the time the electron's going to be within this area. So the density of the dot reflects the probability of finding the electron. It's important to understand, though, that the electron is not like a moth flying around a flame. It's, it's not like that. It's, it's a wave and a particle at the same time. So in a, in a sense, this is a standing wave, like we saw with the string. It made that kind of a eye shape, you know, that is all blurry in the middle, right? This is a standing wave where the electron probably is. We can also represent it as a geometrical shape. Um, it's spherical, right? It's important to understand that it is not a round container that the electron is confined to, but this is the general shape of the orbital. S orbitals are spherical. S does not stand for spherical. It stands for sharp, that's what it was. Um, but S and spherical go together, so use it if you like it. So this is representing a volume in which the electron could be found 90% of the time. But 10% of the time, we expect, we fully expect the electron to be out of there, somewhere else. And that is superimposing the, um, the dot representation and the physical geometric shape. And see, this is 10% of the time the electron's not in there. And it doesn't even have to be that close. It could be over here. That's possible. So when we have a hydrogen atom at room temperature, not disturbed in any way. It has one electron. That electron is going to be in the lowest energy state. A lot like teenage boys. I have several, and I'm getting another one next week. He's just graduating from being a non-teenager. He's turning 13. I'm not getting more children. <laughs> um, that didn't come out very well. Teenage boys, in my experience, like to be horizontal. Um, nowadays, it's often with an iPad watching Netflix or texting their friends, right? But they do get up and do stuff. My boys play football. They get up and they expend tremendous amounts of energy, and then they come home and pff, they're flat again. That's the ground state. The excited state cannot be maintained for long periods of time. It returns to the ground state. Ground state is the lowest energy place possible. That's the 1s orbital. That's the ground state. Um, absorbing energy causes them to go up to a higher level. That's the excited state, unstable, can't stay there, come back. All atoms have one ground state where all of their electrons are in the lowest energy orbitals possible. They have many excited states. They can have just 
a gazillion, probably limitless, really, number of excited states. So we generally just talk about the ground state. So in the principal shell number one, it only has one subshell, and that is the S subshell. Principal shell two, for the quantum number n equals two, that has two subshells, S and P. So there's an S orbital in the second level. So here's the S orbital from the first level. The S orbital from the second level is the same shape, but it's bigger because it's higher energy, it's larger. They're both spherical. The P orbital, then, the P subshell, actually has three different orbitals. They each have the same shape and the same energy, but they have different orientations. And so here's the dot representation, and here's the shape representation. So this looks a little more like a standing wave, doesn't it? Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean to do, I just didn't mean to do a whole bunch of stuff today. So this looks a little more like a standing wave, doesn't it? A little easier to vis visualize, but this is in three dimensions. So the electron is never found at the nucleus, but it's over here and it's over there. So that's one place along the x-axis. There's another orbital, another standing wave along the y-axis, and a third one along the z-axis. They don't overlap. So three different places for the electron to be. <laughs> nice, I got my stylus stuck in my hair. Mm, fabulous. Um, okay. So here's um, a diagram to help us understand what's going on here. So for n equals 1, there's one subshell. n equals 2, two subshells. n equals 3, three <laughs> subshells. You see a pattern here? n equals 4, four subshells. Guess how many 5 would have? 5. <laughs> Thankfully, we're not going there. We're, we're barely going to get up to 4. So in here, there's one subshell. That's the S. This has two subshells. It's got an S and a P, 3, S, P, and D, 4, S, P, D, and F. Um, so N equals 3 has S, P, D, and F. Um, the S and the P subshells there are the same shape as they were in the second level, but they're bigger. And then the D subshell has five different orbitals, and these are really wacky. Aren't those lovely? Those are complicated. <laughs> there they are. I won't make you draw them, but there's five of them. Strange. Well, how do we indicate where the electrons are in the atom? We've got all these different levels and stuff. We've got to come up with some way to describe where they are. One way is called an electron configuration. This shows how the orbitals are occupied by electrons for a particular atom. And so we use the principal quantum number and the letter designation to indicate the different orbitals. So for the hydrogen atom, it has one electron. The lowest energy orbital is the 1s. And so we write 1s, and then we use a superscript to say how many electrons are in that orbital. Another way to do it is an orbital diagram. This is a little more like a picture. Here we're showing electrons as arrows in a box. So for hydrogen, here this box is representing that 1s orbital, and I've drawn, well, someone drew an arrow. It, it only has half of a head. That's, that's the way they do it. I don't know why. Um, one arrow in there, and that represents there's one electron in there. Um, there's another property of, of electrons, and that is spin. Um, I think the easiest way to think of this is they're, they're spinning um, like clockwise or counterclockwise. Like you could have two um, tops. Um, 
and one spinning clockwise and one spinning counterclockwise. I, I'm, my brain is going off to Andrew and his little toys, and I can't remember the name of them. You pull the thing, and they, there's some that spin right and some that spin left, but I can't remember their name. Pardon me? Beyblades, Bay yes, thank you. And I've done it, yeah, with him many times, but I still couldn't remember. Beyblades. There's some that spin to the right and some that spin to the left. And so you can think of electrons as being like that. Um, there's an important principle called the Pauli exclusion principle that says orbitals may hold no more than two electrons and they have to have opposing spins. So you can't have two electrons that are spinning in the same direction in the same orbital. You can have two, but they have to be spinning in opposite directions. So in those orbital diagrams, we symbolize that by using arrows pointing in different directions. We've got one pointing up and one pointing down. So let's, let's try this out here. Let's write electron configurations and orbital diagrams for helium and for lithium. Well, how many electrons does helium have? One. Hydrogen has one. Helium has two electrons. We've got two electrons to deal with here. I kind of actually like to do the orbital diagram first. So I'll do it over here on the right. So the first, the lowest energy orbital is the 1s. This can hold two electrons, but they have to have opposite spins. One spins up and one spins down. Well, an electron configuration is using just letters and numbers to describe this picture. So I'm going to write 1s, and how many electrons are in that orbital? Two. So I'm going to put a superscript 2. Let's do lithium. How many electrons does lithium have? Three. Three electrons. Well, so I'm going to go for the lowest energy one first. That's the 1s. What's the next highest? 2s. So I'm going to draw 2s over here. I've got three electrons. Well, I can put two in this box, but I can only have two. So I'm going to put the third one over there. This is the orbital diagram for lithium showing where the electrons are in the different orbitals. That's the ground state. So then if I make that into an electron configuration, I've got 1s. How many electrons in the 1s? How many arrows in the box? Two. And then the next one is the 2s, and how many arrows in that box? One. Now, look, I'm a chemist and I wrote the number one. We do write ones for electron configurations. Any questions? When you have multiple electrons, I've still got three minutes. Um, I didn't start early. When you have multiple electrons, the subshells in a principal level do not actually have the same energy because of electron-electron interactions. So we would expect that the 2s and the 2p orbitals would have the same energy. Here we're representing energy as going up. But the 2p orbitals are actually sli slightly higher in energy, and it's complicated, and we don't want to go into it. Um, the, the 3s is higher than the 2s, the 4s is higher, and the 5s is higher. So within the s type, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it goes up. And within the p, it goes up. And within d, it goes up. And in, in an individual level, it goes up. But then they're all kind of staggered around. Um, so let's write the electron configuration and orbital diagram for carbon. How many electrons does carbon have? Six. So we've got 1s, and we've got 2s, and then we're going to need to have more because this is only going to hold four. So next is 2p. Well, I didn't make that big enough. 2p, there's actually three of those, and they are the same level as each other, and so we, we draw them as boxes that are connected. So that's 2p. This is the lowest energy. I'm going to put two electrons in there. 
And then the next one is this, two electrons in there. I've got two electrons left. And so I'm going to put them in here. And you might be tempted to put two of them in the first box. But Hund's rule says that when filling orbitals of equal energy, the electrons fill them singly first with parallel spins. This is like people getting on a bus. You don't share a seat with a stranger when there are empty seats. You go sit by yourself, right? So these are like bus seats. So here's the first guy. The second guy gets on the bus. I'm like, I am not going to sit hip to hip with this stranger when I can sit in my own seat. So he goes over there. So that's the electron, I'm sorry, the orbital diagram for carbon. And then from that, we get 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And that is the electron configuration. So on Thursday, I'm going to talk to you about the Quantum Hotel which is a discount resort for electrons in Mrs. K's chemistry land. And this will uh, hopefully help you to understand what, uh, what we're talking about here.